talk a little bit about how people screen, but just to give you an idea, we will find more than one, more than 30 women for every one carrier who passes our screening. We will be looking at many of the same women that you look at online. We'll be looking at advertisements we place regularly in Massachusetts, Connecticut, Pennsylvania, and elsewhere. We will be responding to women who are friends of surrogates. We'll even be re-screening surrogates who've done it before in other programs and even in our own programs. But by the time we end that process, we are only picking one out of 30 of those women. And that is in part due to a myriad of facts. One that Melissa's already talked about is the state that they come from. No New York, no New Jersey, no Florida for a gay couple, no Texas or Oklahoma for a gay couple, etc. They need to be a woman who's had a child. Many women who haven't had a child would like to do this for you. A number of lesbians would like to do it for you if they've never had a child. Unless they've had a child, we don't know their birth history. We don't know if they can deliver. We don't know if they're fertile. We don't know if they will have an uncomplicated pregnancy. And that is hugely important. In addition, we look at their home life. Do they have a support system? Some people would prefer to work with a single woman. In fact, for our couples from England, they need to work with a single woman because the English system will deem the father, the, the husband, to be the father of the child if they weren't to work with a single woman. But nevertheless, single women can have support systems. They can have friends. They can have parents. We need to talk to those support systems. Those support systems themselves need to be screened and need to be supportive. And the added factor, is the husband going to be comfortable with her working with a gay couple? When we started this program 12 years ago, I think I said to New York Times when we recorded, one in 10 women would work with us who wanted to work with a gay couple or single. Now I find eight in 10 women were willing to work with a gay couple, but more than half of those would prefer to work with a gay couple because of a whole history of wonderful relationships that they found working with gay couples because they don't have the history of infertility that can be very painful to have to deal with and the issues of control that I think some women feel like, you know, it didn't work for them, so they'd really like to tell the circuit everything and how to do it. Um, there are a whole series of other things, the criminal and background checks that Melissa talked about, but just as important, the uh, doctor from RMA will talk to you about the fact that they do a very intensive medical screening on these women and on their husbands. And those involve such things as all the sexually transmitted disease, but also things like, do they smoke? Is there nicotine in their system? Do they take any alcohol or drugs? And the same thing about their husbands, making sure that they're not going to get abused. All these factors, not the least of which are the insurance issues that come to bear. Is this a woman for whom I can say to you, she's got insurance that has no exclusion whatsoever and you're comfortable because in my program, nobody's paid more than $5,000 and that's only happened once in 12 years for a woman who had insurance with no exclusion and there was a fight. But I've only had like three fights. Everybody else, complete coverage, and, and I cover you free of charge if there's ever that battle. Generally speaking, if you want 100% security, there is the Lloyds of London policy. But it's a $25,000 potential do dollar option. That's a very expensive option, so we look for others. But it's our job, our name to the line, our liabilities on the hook to make that determination for you. So those are the kinds of things that we look at when we do initial screenings with carriers, and we can talk to you also about you personally, because no one's going to walk through my program, and I don't believe Melissa's or anybody else's, without saying, does it work for you? I have a relationship today, 14 years, after, 15 years after I met my surrogate, that still remains and is a wonderful friendship, and I care enormously about her. We talk three or four times a year, the kids see her every other year, and she's out in California. But it is a wonderful, wonderful relationship. It's been very meaningful for my children in terms of their comfort with themselves and their comfort with how they came into the world to have that relationship. So it's important that this be the kind of person that'll work well with you, whether it be about how much contact you want to have or where she lives or what kind of a person is she. Um, and so and what are her interests in common so that we match you for what you're looking for, not the least of which is how you feel about selective reduction, how you feel about abortion.